Hello everyone, it's time for another edition of Adventures in Careerland. I am your host, Adrian Magnifico. I'm the career lead at the Louisville Arts and Technology Center. And we think we've got a humdinger of a show for you today. And the Louis Riel Arts and Tech Center is a very special place. 13 applied technical and apprenticeship programs for students in high school, post-secondary students, and international students who traverse the pond to make their way to our little space. It's a really cool place where students can think about their best selves, think about skills, think about options for them think about possibilities so one of these programs is the broadcast media program and we are broadcasting live from the podcast studio in the broadcast media program with a number of students in here and it's a very very cool place for students to find that confidence sometimes they lack in high school as they venture out into the world and I am very fortunate to have two guests, two co-hosts in this on this podcast. And the first one is Caitlin Middlestadt, who's in the broadcast media program. Caitlin, how are you today? I'm pretty good. How are you? Well, I'm always good. What, what have you been up to today? What's made your day so wonderful today? Because you always answer me, I'm tired, I'm okay. I want to know what really, I want to know the excitement in your life, Caitlin. What's going on? Well... <laughs> today, today wow. you sound like Eeyore, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I went down into the plumbing trades. And what does that mean? You went down into the plumbing trades? Well, they're downstairs. Okay, the broad so just for the context, the broadcast media program goes into the other programs, one of which is the plumbing trades, the automotive trades, but they're in the plumbing trades. And what are you doing down there? Uh, we were helping film their commercial thing for like to show to other schools and stuff to like see if kids are into it and i also worked on my resume today because i am hoping to send it to uh, where i want to go hoping to earn an internship speak up girl yes. you're hoping to earn an internship yes with whom are you looking around are you, are, or is that too early to share it's a secret it's a secret but i, I have like a that. place you have a place yes. in mind yes. so i've been working with caitlin on this resume I gotta say, she's working hard, and I'm <laughs> proud of her and, and her effort. So good for you, Caitlin. And they do cool things in the broadcast media program. Yeah. So when you go into that space downstairs, the plumbing area, dun, 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 they're always in the basement too, right? Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> what kinds of things do you help with? You're making helping them make a video. So what what would be something that you'd be working with with these folks down there? Um. Well. I was helping use the gimbal, which is you put your phone in it and it like stabilizes the phone and it's cool. Um, and Geneva, she dressed up as one of the people <laughs> in plumbing trades to help out, to add diversity. Well, can't you find there. a plumber down there? Aren't there 20 of them down yeah, there? Why no, does Geneva have to dress up like a plumber? There's no girls. There's no woman. Oh, we need diversity. Mm -hmm. I like that. So Well played. Mm -hmm. Well played. Yep. All right. Do you need an old guy to dress up? I could do that. No. <laughs> so could Rob Olson, actually, one of our guests today. He could dress up as an old guy, too. So that's good. Our second co-host, a guest co-host. How exciting is that? Because our regular co-host, Caden Fiddler. We'll always get his name wrong. Caden is ill today, so we are ably, ably helped out by Geneva Divine. What a great name that is, Divine. Thank you. I, I love my last name. I Can you imagine? Magnifico and Divine P.I. Investigative. Wow. Let's let's start it up. We could have our own sitcom. We could. Magnifico Divine. Because Magnifico is a great name. Divine's yeah. a great name. Middlestat, that's pretty hard. Hey. Middlestat. Okay. <laughs> well, at least hard. you pronounce it better than Seidler. S S S S okay. Siddler? Yeah, whatever that guy's name is. <laughs> anyway, Geneva, you're a guest. How do you feel about being a guest for the first time? She's usually behind in the booth behind the scenes yeah. in the booth so how, yep. how do you feel about doing this i was excited i've always wanted to sit at the podcasting table and talk with you guys because i just listen and i always have stuff to say like back there i always talk with phoenix about what's going on um but now i actually get to project my voice and uh, chat about it and ask questions. okay so this is your this is your big crack at it maybe this is a giant audition maybe this is your big chance to start them Yes. Or not. Yes. No. You, know, uh -oh. you can also, maybe you just screw it up and we'll never, 
we'll never work with you again. Anyway, those are the great possibilities, Geneva. How exciting is that? No, we're super, I'm kidding. We're super happy to have <laughs> you on this and we're super happy to have you uh, ex explore this possibility. I saw you on LRSD TV. That's something that this program does. And I thought you were fantastic on TV. You're an the anchor, connection. you're an anchor type. Yes. What's that called? The on connection? The connection. LRSD connection, our own TV show, our own TV program, right? Yep. Or is it a station? Is it well, a station? What is it? It's on YouTube. Yes. So it's a little mm, a, a little playlist that's on YouTube to put all the connections in there, and it's like a newscast. You know, we're also going to host the football game at the IG Field yes. on Friday. Me and Caitlin the championship. Are doing yeah. That. So yep. you guys are, are streaming the football game at IG Field. Mm -hmm. how, how do you feel and about we're gonna that? Host it. I'm excited. Yeah, you're we're hosting so excited. it, so you're going to be the what play by play, no, or what do you mean when you say hosting? We're going to be on camera, being like. We're here at the IG field. Yeah. Reporting With live. Uh, reporting live. Oh, oh yeah. you're going to sound like Elmo yeah. then. <laughs> yeah. So it's going to be an, an edition of Sesame Street. Yeah. yeah. Do or do not. There is yeah. no try. That'll be very good. Mm -hmm. my, my Jedi. Anyway, we have a pretty cool guest today. And I tell you, this guest helped us out um, because he was he's supposed to go on down the road. But I said, Rob, can you come and do this this week? We need you this week. And he said, yes, moved a meeting or did something for us because he's such a generous person. And this is cool for me because we were both in a play way back in 1978. That's ancient. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. That's I feel great. When you said that, my knee ached, my hip hurt, hurt a little bit. Uh, I'm not sure my left ear hears as well as it used to. Anyway, we have a special guest. This is Rob Olson from the Manitoba. Hey, everybody. He's from the Manitoba Centennial Center Corporation. He's the CEO. So we actually have a CEO on this program. How often does that happen? It's amazing. It should happen more often. With I, your kind of Paul Adriano, it should happen more often. I, I agree. We just had a crazy thing happen when they opened a door. This, these mics are so sensitive, Rob that you can hear a pin drop in here and somebody just opened a door uh my little minions around here opening doors anyway rob how are you doing sir you're the ceo of the centennial concert hall and the extent tell us what that involves like you're involved with the entertainment district down there and what does a ceo of the manitoba centennial center corporation actually do and what kinds of properties do you connect with give us a little insight into that well, listen, first of all, if I can say anything, uh, thank you for asking me to, uh, to come on the podcast. I think this is a great opportunity to discuss all things career related and, you know, and, and to just share a few, uh, few stories that I've encountered over my uh, experience. So listen, the CEO of the Manitoba Centennial Center Corporation, uh, we're a provincial crown corporation. So in other words, we're like hydro, liquor lotteries, MPI, uh, we're governed by an act. And our act is quite specific. It says you are going to look after the arts industry. And how are you going to support the arts industry? Well, you're going to do it by looking after about 750,000 square feet of space where art happens. So my portfolio or my responsibilities are for the Centennial Concert Hall, the Planetarium, the Manitoba Museum, the Royal Manitoba Theatre Centre, the Warehouse Theatre Centre, uh, a multi-art multi, uh, multi uh, art space called Art Space, yep. <laughs> oddly enough. Yep. And we also have one other venue that we uh, that we look after because we're in the movie industry as well, movie and television production. So we, we, uh, we own and operate a studio, a movie production studio called the Manitoba Production Centre. Now, just as a point of clarification, our organization looks after the facilities so there is a separate administration for the royal manitoba theater center there's a separate administration for the manitoba museum but we provide the facilities we work with them we make sure it's all functional space and then we look after the concert hall directly so we look after the concert hall directly and we look after the movie studio uh, directly ourselves through our own administration so we have our finger in the movie industry and we have our finger in live performances. And uh, I'll tell you, it's a fantastic uh, uh, place to be. The entertainment industry, the arts industry is a fantastic place to be. Well, that's that's an amazing space. Is That's a lot of responsibility. Do you ever feel like this is a massive burden to you? This is huge. 
I don't mean a well, burden. I, 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 what I mean burden is like, is, is the day so busy and there's so many things that can go wrong in so many spaces? Are you, are you problem solving every day? We are problem solving every day, but I'll, I'll be honest, I have a great team that I work with and uh, everybody has their own lane to, uh, to sort of function in. And so a lot of these problems are solved by various managers, directors, VPs uh, that have different responsibilities in the organizations. And as I mentioned earlier, the administration of the Manitoba Theatre Centre, that's handled by a group of very talented people over there. They program the stage at the Manitoba Theatre Centre. The administration of the Manitoba Museum, very talented administration. I mean, they put on, I'm sure many of the students and many of your listeners have been through the museum uh, probably, you know, in the last five to 10 years. It's a fantastic space. Yes. But our challenge is it's old space. Uh, these buildings, uh, most of these buildings were built uh, and opened in 1968. You think that 78 was ancient. These were even before then. Wow. 1968 and 1970. So a lot of the facilities are in need of significant maintenance. And uh, that's where a lot of our challenges come forward. And programming our concert hall stage. That's a, that's a challenge as well, too. Oh, that sounds great. That sounds, sounds like every day is a different day for you. Is that fair to say? Every day is a different day. Yeah. 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 And when we get a call, when we get a call from the producers that Lainey Wilson wants to come on the stage of the concert hall, you know, we, we clear our schedule and we try to accommodate Lainey Wilson and bring her in. And, uh, you know, so that type of stuff is very, it's very interesting from my perspective, oh, dealing so with all the different promoters and entertainers. And awesome. So, so that's, that's an amazing opportunity. So when Adventures in Kareeland wants to broadcast from the concert hall, you'll just clear the schedule for us and we can just go in there. We can we can give you a permanent home here if you'd like. <laughs> permanent home. Oh, hey, can you let us out of the basement? The door's wow. locked again. What's I'm, going on? I'm not saying it'd be ideal space, but we've got. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Rob and I go back. I said, well, the, all that's very interesting, but we, what we really want to know is high school. What were you like in high school? What was going down? And of course, we were in plays together. We had some of the same influences together. As we grew up, we both went to Nelson McIntyre Collegiate. You're a grad from 1978. We both attended university in our first years, and then we kind of diverged into the uh, down a couple of paths. And um, we didn't see sure, yeah. much of each other. And um, tell us about your high school life. Uh, wow. What was that like? What was it like in the hallways? What was going through our minds? Like, I, I, I know I could talk about that, but I'm interested in, what a CEO is thinking. And did you ever imagine yourself in this position you're currently in way back singing Surrey with the fringe on top from Oklahoma mm. in the plays at Nelson Mack? Well, you know, what's interesting about our time in Nelson Mack, uh, Adriano, and you know this, I mean, we didn't really have a music program in school. Um, uh, I, you know, Windsor Park Collegiate, which was also an institution that I went to for grade nine, by the way, uh, before we moved into the Norwood area and I went to Nelson Mack and first met Adriano, I uh, didn't have a music program. Uh, so uh, initially I auditioned for one of the musical plays uh, and uh, was able to get the lead role in grade 10. And then from there we had uh, uh, two other uh, musicals uh, that were brought on by, by somebody we both admire and respect. And, and her name was Lynn Axworthy and she was... Uh, our teacher, our English teacher at the time, and she uh, had a fondness for the art. I think Lynn, Mrs. Axworthy they actually sat on the board of the Royal Manitoba Theatre Centre at the time. And so uh, we, uh, you know, Adriano and I shared that experience. Uh, we were able to perform on the stage, uh, did three musical productions. Um, but just to be know, clear, Rob, just to be clear, Rob, when you auditioned, you had this incredible tenor voice. Right. So it, it was amazing. In grade 10, you got the leads in all these major musicals like I just yeah. got it in grade 12. And, uh, yeah. and I, like I, I told this story to Rob, like my own mother, who was into theater and opera. I remember running home one day, not running home because actually dragged me. Mrs. Actually dragged me into the play. She was looking yeah. for someone to be funny in a funny role. And sometimes I can be remotely funny. So. It was, I remember Ali Hackam in Oklahoma and you were in Oklahoma and I went over and I said, mom, I'm in Oklahoma. She went, oh, because my mom understood theater, understood the musical arts. And she went, oh, that's nice, Adriano. 
will that Rob, will that nice Rob be singing in the play again? Because she loved your voice. <laughs> Drove me nuts. Yeah. Here I was, yeah, well, finally, finally in a play, something that would please my mom, and all I ever wanted to do was please my mom. <laughs> Freud would have loved to sit and have a conversation with me. And she said, oh, as long as Rob is singing, I think I'll come. Well, God bless your mother, I, I I'll tell you. And you know what, she had an eye for talent. Hey, what can I say? <laughs> she had an eye. That's right. She practically ignored, so, ignored me, but she thought, she loved, you had a beautiful tenor voice. Like That's why in grade 10, 11, 12, suddenly. Did you know you had a voice like that? You know, a, you know, a bit of history maybe for the students and the listeners. I, 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 I lived in Windsor Park for eight years, so I attended many of the schools there. And uh, um, I did my first production in grade nine at Windsor Park Collegiate HMS Pinafore, which is a uh, an operetta and when I auditioned for the role again those roles typically went to grade 12 students so here I was as a grade 9 student like I think 14 years old and I was given not the lead but a major singing role in HMS Pinafore which was my first experience with operetta I could always sing yeah I sing it sang a ton in the car you know I'd sing at home all the time um, my brothers and sisters all could carry a tune uh, so, you know, we're a musical, although I'll tell you the biggest regret that I have, and for anybody that wants to follow up, is I didn't learn to play an instrument, which is, you know, not too late, not too late. Who knows what I'll do in my retirement, but not too late. Uh, but I started off in grade nine at Windsor Park, uh, which is why I ended up at Windsor Park in grade nine, because I was going to Belleville at the time for junior high, and they didn't have a music program. So they moved me to Windsor Park in grade nine, uh, so I could be enrolled in the arts program that they had there. And, and started my musical production career there. And, uh, you know, very fortunate uh, uh, to be able to get that start at Windsor Park. And uh, yeah, had three, three more years at Nelson Mack. And then, uh, you know, then I did the proverbial wedding singer thing for a number of years and sang at a few people's weddings and sort of carried on uh, in that vein uh, after that. But nothing professional, nothing, nothing, uh, nothing more came of that other than you know, I'm Adam Sandler, the wedding singer. That's right. That's but, right. I love that movie. And and, but, and and ladies are bringing, you know, hot meatballs as small, small tokens of appreciation for singing. Do you remember that scene where that old lady brings him the meatballs, thanking him for teaching her how to play the piano or something and sing? Do you remember yeah. that scene? <laughs> so your hand's full of meatballs. Anyway, and you know what? It reminds me, too. Back in the day, we didn't have music programs. Like no. The, the students today have everything. Geneva, do you have everything, don't you? Yes, I do. You can choose yes, anything I've, you want. Go. Caitlin, you can choose anything you want. Is that right or yeah, wrong? Yeah. From plumbing to... <laughs> From plumbing. <laughs> you don't have a musical program here. Yeah, I don't have a com uh, music program you here. Should, though. Yeah, yeah, but in your schools, back in your yes. schools. Yep, there you have is a, a school. school in Louis Riel, school division, oh, yeah. where the Arts and Tech Center is located, that doesn't have a musical program or doesn't have a computer science program. Like, the choices are so crazy, Rob. We had no choices at all. I remember I wanted to take no. a, a higher end math course. No, we didn't offer it. No. no. No, we just didn't have anything. So we went to school. What did school mean to you in those days? Like, what did it mean? Like finishing up in grade 12? It was kind of like you just had to go to university, right? That's what I felt like at the end. Our only real option was going to university. Did you feel that way? And that is that why you took first year university? And what happened? Oh, I, I did. So my mother was a teacher, so she was adamant uh, you know, and I'll be honest, I mean, I wasn't the greatest student. Obviously, I, I got through grade 12 in high school. Uh, but she encouraged me to go to university because she felt that had I taken a, a, a year off, for example, to do other things, uh, that I might not go back to post-secondary education. So she really pushed me to go uh, to university. And that had its pluses and minuses. Uh, so I did first year, didn't know what I wanted to do. Um, I sort of had a, uh, some rural exposure. My aunts and uncles all owned farms. And so at the time, I thought, uh, well, why not go into agriculture? Why not be an Aggie? So I enrolled at the University of Manitoba and uh, went into first year sciences uh, with the idea that I was going to major in agriculture. And, you know, quite frankly, it okay, was not. Okay, but you're choosing agriculture? Come on, man. Like, yeah, I like, know. Like because somebody was on a you have relatives who worked on a farm is was that it? Well, that was that was part of it because you okay. know what it came what it came down to Adriano was I didn't know what I wanted to do. Yeah. So you do you what know, you know, I, right? Or you do what you see. You do what you think you have an interest in because I, I've always followed the path of 
doing what's interesting to you. And so that was mildly interesting to me. And I thought, uh, you know, one, one subject matter that I did fairly well in was the sciences in high school. So I figured, well, maybe that was a logical place for me to go. I mean, in hindsight, probably I should have enrolled in the arts and, and found, uh, found a path forward there. But um, I chose the sciences and uh, went into it. And after the first year of university, I said, this is not for me. And, uh, you know, I made the decision and, you know, consultation with my parents, my mother in particular. And I said, I think I'm going to work for a while. I'm going to go, I'm going to go to work and I'm going to find out what I, what I want to do. And so I did take that next year off, which was, I guess, well, way we, well, 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 we drove to school together. We were in a carpool together that first year. We and, did. And, and Axworthy inspired me to be a teacher of literature. And it was, yes. I, I really liked that. And I, I really got into it. And she, um, I think I've taught Hamlet 50 times and every time I teach it, I love it more. It's, and I remember, do you remember when we went to the, um, her funeral a few years back? Yeah. Yeah. Her, her, her Hamlet, her Falcon Hamlet textbook was there. Hmm. Do you remember that? And some of the artifacts? Yeah. I remember, yeah. I remember picking that In up. That and separate just, room there? Yeah. It, it, it was so cool to me. Like it kind of surged through me just what an influence she was in my life and, and, and important. But you weren't into the lit thing. You didn't even think you were a good student. So when you think you're a lousy student and you go to university and you kind of leave after the first year, what's going through your head? Well, you know, I, I'm not sure what's going through my head at the time. I just know that that's not the path I want well, to go through. It's a pretty empty go place. Down. Pretty empty place for the most part, I guess, in those days. It's an empty place and it was full <laughs> and it was just waiting, waiting to be filled with something. Right. You know, so. But I got to say, I, know, I mean, you know, the reason why Mrs. Axworthy singled you out for the profession that you're in right now is because you were such a great communicator. And she saw that in you. She knew that you had the ability to, to speak to people and to speak to them not in any kind of a, a condescending kind of way. And I don't know if that's the right word, but you had a way of relating to people, relating to students, hopefully. And she saw that in you because, you know, in, in a lot of ways. Mrs. Axworthy was that, that way as well. She was a good communicator. She knew how to draw the best out of people. And I think she saw that in you. And so that's why, as opposed to me, I mean, she didn't give me any career counseling at all. You know, I left high school and I thought I was her favorite, but obviously that wasn't the case. You might've been her favorite no, at the time. No, 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 no. She, <laughs> she loved you, man. And you know what was interesting? She, I used to write a lot and I still do some writing. I write the occasional article for the Globe and Mail or or some magazine, or and I, I write a column in the Community Review, the Free Press. But she's the one who turned me on to that because she showed my work to a sports editor named Jack Matheson. Do you remember that, the Tribune? Yep, sure. And that I thought I never thought anything of it, but you know, thirty years later, I start writing. It was crazy. I don't know why I didn't start earlier, but she was. I don't. She showed an interest in me, but she 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 showed a lot of interest in you as as a person, I think she was so proud of you and the kind of production she put on with you. Like you raise those productions with your voice and your acting. Oh my gosh, you raise those productions to things I don't even think she could have imagined happen in a high school. Honestly, I mean that sincerely. Yeah. And yeah, uh, no. Rob, you said yeah. uh, you're interested in musical theater because you really liked singing in the car, but what got you into acting? Because that's two different things, singing and then acting. How did you get into acting? Well, I think I think it just went hand in hand with the types of productions that we were putting on in school. And and I got to tell you, I mean, I, I was comfortable on stage. I had stage fright like everybody else, but I was comfortable on stage. And if there's one lesson, you know, about the arts that I'd like to dwell on just for a sec, is boy, oh boy, oh boy, does it, does it make you comfortable speaking in front of an audience? Yeah. And I know for a lot of people, that's, that's, it can really lock you up. You can really become, you know, frightened by the, by the, uh, by the uh, you know, the job of speaking in front of somebody. And being on stage, singing, putting yourself out there that way, acting, putting yourself out that way, you know you're going to be criticized by somebody. Somebody's going to, you know, suggest it and pick pick you apart. But when you can get through that and you develop a level of confidence, so that you, when you do go out into the world and you do start forming that career, um, being able to 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 communicate with the people that you need to communicate with, and and not be apprehensive about it. Sure, you're nervous. You're always nervous, but you're able to get through it a little bit more easily. And I I credit that all to 
you know, to my appearances on the stage, uh, being asked to do it. You know, it, it, God bless her, uh, uh, Mrs. Axworthy. That was one of the things she encouraged me to do is to keep doing what I was doing uh, on stage. And, you know, Adrian, you're right. Uh, she could have, she could have, uh, she could have, she did help me in other ways. I mean, she did get me a meeting with the general manager of the Royal Manitoba Theatre Centre at the time, and they were going to send me to Los Angeles for some stage work and production, but, you know, I was only 16 at the time, and my mother didn't think it was a great idea to send me off to Los Angeles at 16 years of age, because, as I said, my mother was an educator, a teacher in the uh, uh, well, St. Boniface School Division at the time. Oh, my and, gosh, uh, Rob. Think of how that... That's an amazing contact p potential. Think of what might have happened there. What do you think would have happened? Yeah, I, you know, I do you ever, I, do you ever I, think I, back and go, "What if"? Uh, well, I do, but you know what? You only have one life to live, and and you can't dwell on the what ifs yes. too too much. Uh, but but yeah, I mean, certainly, you know, certainly that what if I'd gone down that path? Um, but I didn't. Yes. So you you know you deal with the uh, with the hand that's in front of you, and um, you know I think ultimately you know I've ended up in a pretty good place. Yeah, so, you, you've done okay, Rob. Don't worry about it. <laughs> so how ironic that you would take that early sort of exposure to the arts, and then here some 25, 30 years later, you end up being the CEO of an of a crown corporation, a provincial crown corporation that is focused on the arts. So, yes. you know, there was a lot of there was a lot of synergy there when I came into this role uh, that I could get behind. And, uh, you know, that's an important, you know, kind of lesson to learn, too. If you if you like what you're doing, obviously, you know, it doesn't seem so much like a job, even though this job does have its challenges. Don't get me wrong. Right. And you know what? She was all in school. That's what school should be. Right. Actually, and, and the rest of the, uh, the staff there. I mean, you remember Mr. North and the oh, there were others. I, I love these guys. Um, they drop seeds in you, right? That's, what's, that's, that's what right. teachers have to do. That's what schools should be doing. That's what your life paths should be all about. Right. What seeds are being dropped in front of, behind you and in front of you that are helping you connect and gravitate to experiences that seem to fill you full of wonder or imagination and possibility. That's what I think about with students all the time. I always ask them, what have you done? Like, so what have you done and why did you do it? We don't spend time in school reflecting about what we do. No. We, we just want no. you to do it, consume the course, keep moving or, uh, and do or it. Or how we get there. I mean, you know, that, that story about, you know, being on stage and then being able to stand in front of a, uh, a boardroom audience and, and go through a presentation, you know, uh, that might be boring, but being able to communicate that, you know, to the point where the people in the audience in the boardroom understand what you're saying, because there is an air of confidence in being able to stand up and articulate what you're trying to say uh, to the people that uh, are decision makers. So you, you look back and you go, you know what, that was a great experience. And academically, I look back at my experience in high school and I go, wow, what did I really accomplish there? But there's so much more to the high school environment that if you look back, shapes, shapes your path in ways that you don't know just yet until you get there and you go, that really helped me. Now think you about know? this. Now I've, I've asked you this question. We talked yesterday in the phone. Uh, um, if I didn't ask you these questions, would you have even pondered this stuff? Um, I think so. I often, I often think about uh, the relative comfort I have uh, speaking in front of audiences. Uh, and I think about that. And I think often that that experience on the stage, you know, really helped me feel a little bit more comfortable speaking in front of audiences. Yeah. Right on. So tell us now you drop out of university. What's the next step? Yeah. Then? Because parent, you have a mom as a teacher, dad who's a yeah. a foodist. That's a barber back in my day. Yes. Um, uh, and mom is probably saying that you got to go to school and do something else, right? Yeah. So I take a year off and I work uh, the odd job here and there. Well, not the odd job. I work uh, during during that period, and then I decide like I'm 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 not cut out for the work that I was doing at the time, which is again part of the experience. You do things and then you learn what you don't want to do as much from the things that you do want to do. And so I said, I, I've got to go back. I've got to, I've got to, uh, I've got to uh, bone up on my post-secondary education. So I enroll at Red River Colleges and I go into their business administration program. And it's a two-year, 20-month program. And you come out of there with a diploma in business administration. 
And I, and I, I did. I took that course and I, I completed it and I majored in marketing and administration. And again, that gave me some, that gave me the, 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 the groundwork now to go out into the business community and look for opportunities uh, with some basic knowledge, you know, about business law, business ethics, economics for some reason resonated really well with me. And I, and I scored really well uh, in my economics classes at Red River uh, College. Well, that and so, be, that's interesting because I've always felt the piece of arts that attracts me, and I'm a humanities guy too, the economics has an artistic feel to it about the way things move, the ebb and flow sure. of things, the nuance, right? I always thought economics was, uh, as much as it charts and graphs this how economies move, there's something philosophical about how things move and philosophies that fuel or defuel economies, you know? I, I always found that fascinating stuff, and I think it relates to the kind of work that you've done in your life related to humanities. Well, yes, and that's, you know, that's a reflecting point right there in and of itself, Anno. Uh, you, don't, uh, you don't think about that until you, it's presented by somebody else, and maybe that was, you know, one of the things that sort of shaped your career path. Uh, but Red River, if I can say anything, was a great uh, opportunity for me um, and uh, it certainly uh, it was conducive to sort of my my learning and my ability to learn. And uh, I would uh, highly encourage any student who's you know not certain about where to go, what to do, what career path to take a look at Red River College Polytechnic. They've emerged uh, tremendously as an organization. They're now a degree granting uh, facility. So I mean, if if there's a stream that you want to get your undergrad degree in. Uh, you can certainly look at the Red River uh, for programming there as well too. So that's my that's my high level pitch for Red River College. Well, no, and that's uh, I think it's appropriate. Red River is also very responsive to the um, to the needs of the economy, right? And to the needs of totally. employers, right? And that's where they can get a program together pretty quickly because an employer says we're short of these particular workers and 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 these skill sets. So, well, and we were was it Caitlin that was talking about plumbing before? Yes. I mean, mm -hmm. certainly. You know, one of the things for sure that they that Red River really challenge, challenges everybody or wants everybody to participate in is getting more involvement from uh, women in the trades, for example. So, you know, there's a real focus on on accommodating uh, um, female students to enroll in the trades. By the way, you know, and and it, you know, I'll say that for, for the benefit of this podcast because there is something that'll lead up to. I did go back to Red River College later in my career and spent 10 years in a, uh, an administrative capacity as their associate vice president of uh, uh, auxiliary services and facility services. Um, so, you know, I, I've, I got to learn Red River from the other side, the administrative side as well too. And it's a great, great institution, but uh, I know there was a real focus on trying to bring other people, when I say other people, not the people that you would think would go into the trades, Man, right. right. So, so, Kate, um, so I'm thinking, Caitlin and Geneva, is this a chance? There's, they need women plumbers. Are you interested? Yes, I yeah. know how to unplug my toilet, so Woo! I should definitely be able to go into plumbing. Oh, sure, you'll be a great yeah. plumber because <laughs> you know how to plunge the toilet. That's very good. Although I appreciate that, my children never plunge the toilet. I, I'd walk in there sometime, know, going, "What is happening here?" <laughs> I used to play Mario. You, yes, Mario. Mario's a plumber. Oh, there so you it, go. Yeah, so, it's going to come natural. Well, we're making these excellent connections that are, in a, in a sad way, disappointing me in a way, but it's uh, <laughs> that's okay. Uh, hey, you were you did the Red River thing. That was a pretty high-end job. You're, you're in charge of auxiliary services. That's everything at Red River that doesn't have to do with uh, Yeah, so it's everything that, that's non-academic. Yes. So they, they, at Red River, they call them strategic business units. So, you know, I was responsible for the performance of the bookstore, all of food services, um, security, uh, parking services, uh, what else? Awesome, uh, awesome. Uh, hey, print the, shop. Hey, but the cool thing is before that, you're working at Mr. Steak, assistant manager. Yeah. You're in a bingo hall before the government yeah. took all that over and understood how much money yeah. people make in bingo halls. Uh, Manitoba lotteries. So how, yeah. did, how did those shape it a bit? How did that shape your well, sensibility and 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 your, your movement into Red River? Because Red River is a big job. You're in charge of a lot of stuff. Yeah, well, yes, and, and in fairness, the job at Manitoba Lotteries when I was employed there. So going back, I was 
employee number 68 of the entire Manitoba Lotteries uh, chain. Uh, so I came on board. You were a infancy. number. You were a number in the system, my friend, isn't it? I was a number in You're the system. You're working for the man. You're working for the man. Uh, oh, they didn't even know my name. They just said, "He's 68. Get out there." That's get good. out there and calm this bingo crowd down. Well, that's, so, a, that's what I'd like to call Caitlin and Geneva. I'm tired of you actually using names. I think we just, I think we should start moving just to numbers. Numbers. I numbers, see, good. Boy, life is simple good. when we're all numbers. Sure. sure. As long as I'm number one. I hope that's okay with everybody. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> we're like all right. We should get those thing one, thing two. Yeah, shirts. we should. All right. <laughs> I'll, I'll look into it. Not. Anyway, <laughs> keep going. Well, I, 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 there's not. So, I mean, the, the story is, is that, uh, you know, you look for opportunities. Yeah. My first job out of Red River College. You've got to remember, this is 1982, guys. This was decades ago. And uh, the job market may be a little bit like it is today. You know, the economy was kind of sliding. Inflation was high. Interest rates were high. Job opportunities weren't that plentiful. Nowadays, if I can plug Red River again, Nowadays, the students are recruited right out of Red River. There's not a program, I don't think, at Red River where you at least have one or two job opportunities when you graduate from their programs. Well, some are 100%. But top, like my son went into mechanical engineering. They were waiting yeah. for them at the door. Waiting. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Totally. Career fairs at Red River College are just something else. They don't even have enough space to host all the employers yes. who are interested in their students. Uh, so 82 was a tough year. So I get a call one day from a, a, a buddy that I went to school with at Red River. And he said, hey, look, uh, this franchise restaurant called Mr. Steak is looking for uh, for people. And by this time, I had been sitting at home for a couple months after I graduated. And the career opportunities, the, the potential didn't look that good. So I said, restaurant manager, I'll give, it a, I'll give it a try. Why not? So I apply for the job. And of course, I get hired. And, uh, you know, the story behind that is not so much the work I had to do, which was business related, uh, but it also, it was a stepping stone. I knew I probably wasn't going to stay in restaurant management. And so another opportunity came along through a connection to uh, be part of a bingo, commercial bingo hall. Like, who would even think of that? I had, that was not even in my radar. To manage a bingo hall? Like how, how, who develops that as a career path? But it was- <laughs> I want to be a bingo hall manager. Who wants to be a bingo hall manager? But you know, as fate would have it, I take the job, it's a little bit more pay. I think that's what motivated me. You know, these jobs were paying me a little bit more, so I jumped. But you know, in retrospect, every one of those experiences played themselves out further down the line. You know, the experience I, I, I got from Mr. Steak, the experience I, I got from being a bingo hall manager, parlayed itself into an opportunity with the government of Manitoba when they said, hey, we can't allow these private bingo halls to go on without some kind of regulation. We need to hire our own people. Without regulation, without us getting our cut. Well, That's okay, I'm I, trying to be polite about that. <laughs> so they wanted their I cut. saw that in action too a few times because I, I volunteered at a bingo hall. They made a lot of money at the old Dubuque Social yeah, Club they, and then the government would come in and suddenly the hundred grand you were giving to the local you know, pro, you know, Holy Cross school, suddenly you're giving them 20 grand because the government's taking the lion's share of that stuff. It's amazing. It was, it was an amazing, I can write a book just on my, my experiences in a bingo hall with the people that you meet, oh, uh, the, you know, when characters, you're, when you're eh? yeah, characters, they're eh? characters. Yes. And you add the, you add the, you add gambling to the mix and it's like you're in another something. musical. All these but characters. It, there is a musical. There's a play there for sure, Adrian. Oh, you and I are going to sit down and we're, we're going to write We're going to sit down we're going to write the musical. <laughs> yes. We're going to call it, it The Bingo Hall. Beautiful. Beautiful moment. Anyway, so hey, but now you're the big you're the big time Centennial Concert Hall Center Corporation thing. What was that interview like? What kind of interview is that when you're sitting down for this job? Like what are you thinking? I'm doing pretty well at Red River. Uh, it's got yeah. a nice job. Uh, this yeah. pops up. Did someone recommend it? Did you see it in, as, as an ad somewhere or, or a posting somewhere? Uh, and what's no. that interview like? Well, I did see it as an ad uh, somewhere. Uh, I probably posted to some social media platform at the time. But it was, uh, it was, uh, it was an opportunity I was looking for. I knew, I, I guess as I got further into my working career, I knew at some point, you know, not to be arrogant about it, but I kind of wanted to run the show. And, uh, you know, even at Red River, 
you know, I was part of the senior management, the executive management at Red River College, and that was a big job. Uh, I still wasn't the person, and I wanted to be the person, you know, and the, when you have an ego, you want to be the person. And uh, uh, this opportunity came up, and I looked at it, and I said, oh, a lot of comparable skills to, uh, to what I'm doing at Red River College. Um, and uh, I applied, and I went through a series of interviews with the board, uh, you know, where including having to be having to prepare a presentation on a lot of hypotheticals. Uh, so in the interview process, they they gave me a lot of uh, material, and they said we want you to fabricate a business plan. We want you to we want to know what your logical approach to breaking down problems are, problem solving. Yeah, they want and, to see your process, uh, eh? Like that's what a lot of companies are asking for now. Uh, they want to see a process because as you interview, yeah, as you interview for jobs, I mean, you know, one of the things they'll inevitably ask you for is, can you give me an example of where you, you know, had a problem at, at work and and how did you resolve it? And so, you know, you've you've got to think about not necessarily the problem in the interview process. But the path to solving the problem, how did you process the problem? How did you get involved? Even if it was you just contributed to a piece of the problem and then somebody else you know, finished it off or a team finished it off. In the interview process, it's all about critical thinking. People want to know if you can think on your feet, if you can think without having to be told to do everything in and of yourself. Because I'll tell you, when you're management roles the hardest part of the job any job is human resources there's no doubt about it people management and uh trying to get the best out of your team is probably the toughest job out there so anybody who can be that person who takes an initiative who demonstrates their ability uh, to, to critically think through a problem is worth their weight in gold uh, and so i applied for the job went through the interview process was offered the job and then, you know, I've, I've been fortunate enough to hold it now for 11, almost 12 years in April uh, for the last 12 years. So it's uh, it's been great. Um, you know, I, I've, I've ended up in a great, great spot and I'm very thankful. Uh, but, you know, if I look back at my my career history, I was being I was being groomed to some degree for this position based on my experiences for jobs that I never thought I'd take in my life. I know. Like I, know. I, I you know, Adriano, you go back to that thing like a bingo manager, huh? And then I'm a casino manager. And I don't know a thing about casino gaming. Next thing you know, the Manitoba Lotteries is sending me to the University of Nevada in Reno. And I'm enrolled in a casino management course. And I'm staying in a dormitory in Nevada, Reno, or Reno, Nevada. And uh, I'm getting classroom exposure to gaming and gambling. And then I come back and I fly back to Winnipeg. And I've got all this course material that I have to go through. And then it becomes a bit of an online learning process. More importantly, there. though, more, more importantly, though, what was the food like in the cafeteria at the University of Nevada? <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking back well, to high school life. Is there going to be food in here? America? Is there going to be food here? <laughs> Pardon me. I'm thinking back to high school life. Is there going to be food here? Well, I mean, yeah, food, <laughs> food, food, food motivates people. You know the I get it. I'm Italian. But it's that. Uh, you know the, the the message is and you don't you don't you don't discredit anything there's value in everything that you do as long as you realize that you're getting you're gaining experience in it and you don't uh, uh, there's just as much to say about a bad experience and what you learn from it as there are about good experiences not all of these work environments not all of the people that I that I interacted with throughout the years were necessarily good at what they did uh, but what they did teach you as you were working with them is what you don't want to be. Oh, so that when you do have the opportunity, when you do have the opportunity to to lead an organization, you you know what kind of leader you want to be. Right on. You know that people right are on. at the core of every operation and how you treat people and how you relate to them is is paramount to your success. I you know that's a great line. I like well uh, we'll move on to something else in a second, but I think that's a great line. You learn about the right pathing by watching other people do some pretty crazy things sometimes. I don't want to be like that. And I don't want to look in the mirror and say I was like that. Those are interesting things because because as you move forward and, and, and 
and create the jigsaw of your life and all the pieces of your life, you're connecting with people who will inspire you and other people who will who will bring you down if they can. And those are that's oh, an, totally. That's an interesting sp space to be in all the time. But when you choose the high road, you're I think you're always smarter, you're always better, um, and your it, relationships will be stronger. So that's pretty cool. It right? may not pay off right away. Don't yes, look for the exactly, payoff. Exactly. Don't but, look for the quick but payoff. But in the end, when, when you have an opportunity to talk on a podcast like this and reflect, you realize that you know your career is not linear. It's it's that's right. it's, it's, it's zigzag. Hey, we're yeah. gonna stop for a second. Caitlin's gonna do something with you called the quick cues. I didn't tell you about this, but she's gonna ask you some questions, and you only answer quickly. So, Caitlin, tell them what this is about and get on it. So it's just a bunch of rapid fire questions. You just say which one you prefer. Are you ready? Ready. Okay, coffee or tea? Coffee. iPhone or Android? Android. Orange juice or apple juice? Apple. Favorite holiday? Christmas. Night or day person? Night. Museum or documentary? Museum. Shows or movies? Shows. Fortune or true love? True love. Cash or card? Card. Extrovert or introvert? Extrovert. Acting or singing? Singing. And what is your favorite podcast? Podcast. This one, Adventures uh -oh. in Career Land. Uh -oh. Yay! Right answer, right answer. Woo. Now we can actually post the podcast. Otherwise, we would have thrown this in the trash heap. If, if like some guys come on this and go, well, I like Pivot with Kara Swisher. No, that's the wrong answer. Sorry. You need to tell us what the <laughs> real answer is or this podcast is officially over. Anyway. Hey, Rob, that was a lot of fun. It's so, you know, what's interesting. We rarely get the chance, even in high school. I ask students, what I've asked of you, I've asked, I always ask of students about, tell me why this has impacted you and how you think it'll affect you moving forward. We rarely get a chance to do that in our lives. So when we do it in the podcast, it's really, it's really amazing to hear your story and honestly to hear you thinking on the spot sometime. How did that feel? Mm. Yeah. Oh, you're asking me a question. Yeah. How does that feel? How does that feel? <laughs> thinking on the spot. Cause a few times you were on the spot. Other times were very clear how, and other times you were going, Hmm. How fortunate I am. Right you know, we live we live in a great country. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna get political to some degree. We live in a great country, and every opportunity out there is is waiting for you to take it. Uh, there was a, a person I worked with. She was actually my boss at Red River College, and uh, at one point I was considering you know another position within the organization, maybe even a career change. And she told me, Rob, the brass ring only comes around so often. And even if you feel like you're not ready, you grab it and go. Oh, because cool. if you, if you've got the if you've got the intellect, if you've got the drive, the desire, not the intellect. That's probably the wrong word. No, the that, drive and the no, that's important too. You, you'll you'll figure your way through it. Yeah. Right and uh, and and I I try to live by that. So when an opportunity presents itself, if I'm interested, I go out and I grab it. Right on. Hey Rob, this has been fun. I hope you've had some fun chatting with us today. Oh gosh, so much fun. Oh. Hey, listen, can I give you a quick Adriano story? Oh, yes. No. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. So so Adri Adriano is the hardest working guy in high school. Uh, he he's a bus boy at Charter House Hotel. <laughs> he draws other guys from the high school in with him. So myself and John Gustafson and Blair Curry and Robert <laughs> Fraser, all these guys have successful careers. Gus is a chiropractor, Robert Fraser's the dentist, all the, he drags us into the Charter House Hotel. And we have like a great summer working there as a part-time job, gain a ton of experience. Uh, and then Adriano the next year comes up to high school and he's driving a brand new vehicle, a brand new vehicle. <laughs> like well, how many 16 year olds go to a dealership and buy a brand new vehicle? <laughs> and, and, and Mr. Magnifico comes to high school and pulls up, you know, where everybody's parking. And here he is in a brand new 1976 77. AMC 77 Gremlin. Wow. A Gremlin. And if you don't know what a Gremlin is, I, I suggest you Google it, but you would have seen it on Wayne's World if you, if you <laughs> saw anything at all. 
And um, Mr. Magnificent pulls up with this brand new AMC Gremlin. And you know, and I'm driving my mother's 1966 Plymouth Valiant four door with a slant six. And he's the only 16 year old in high school that has the wherewithal, the, the, the work ethic and the ability to save to go out and buy a brand new vehicle. Well, that, and that's 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 who you're working with right now. That's wow. awesome. And that car looked like a sawed-off hockey stick. Honestly, it was <laughs> it was such an ugly car. That's but a I good description. It. But I loved it. I loved it. You know what? You say that, Adriano. You say it. But today, that's a classic. Is People it? would would kill for the oh, because it has such a unique design. It was crazy. I, I, it was a crazy design. They didn't make cars like that. It's American Motors Corporation or something. That right. those guys don't even exist anymore. No. Anyway, well, thanks for that humiliation. Um, <laughs> no. Rob, I appreciate you being on this. It's awesome. And hey, I listen. want you to come back. And I, hey, I owe you an Adventures in Careerland sweatshirt. So yeah. You, so you need to come. At some point, we're going to get together and I'll drop this thing off. That and, I will uh, proudly wear throughout the office. And when the Royal Winnipeg Ballet is performing on stage or rehearsing <laughs> on stage, I'll walk through that audience with all those yes. high, high athletic performers with my adventures in Careerland t-shirt and they'll all question me on it yeah, and, I'll question on you and, and they'll say who's that loser i can't believe this guy's got that sweatshirt on is this the car oh she's looking at it right now yeah she's just that's called cute. up the car. that's a cool car that's cute it's a cool car it's yeah. a it's a it's a goofy little car mine was blue with the white stripe Ooh. Ooh. That's such a <laughs> but you car. have to remember at that this? Camp, that's years, it that's my car right there she <laughs> just called up my car that looks like you that's a car that you would drive <laughs> oh that's my a gosh. magnificent and i put a big yeah. sound system in that i don't know if uh, it matches I, the hoodies i put the sound system in there a giant sound system and even the guys who tried to put it in were going i don't think this car was meant to put these speakers in here because it was such an odds you could anyway that's enough of me. <laughs> no. Rob, thanks a lot. I appreciate you doing this. And it was so much Listen. fun. It's so much fun catching up with you and talking with you. And I think you said some really salient things, though, about life and learning and about, you know, it, just trying things out and just moving forward. The experience gives you an extra level yep. of depth and possibility to you about, about what makes you up. Your jigsaw puzzle, your personal jigsaw puzzle is made up of all of those experiences. And you had a lot of them, and you you expounded on them. So, I think students are going to be inspired by what you said. I know I always am. I'm so well, proud of you. I'm so proud of you being in this position and being pr uh, a part of that class. What fun! <laughs> well, we, I think we all did pretty well, yourself included. And uh, it's been my pleasure. I'm happy to happy to do this whenever whenever you want somebody just to plug in and fill some time. But uh, fill some time. Uh, you know, to Caitlin, Geneva, you know, to to all you guys. Uh, listen, I think it's Phoenix. Great to have you on on the podcast. Uh, great to get your perspectives. Uh, keep doing this because I'll tell you what, you don't know it now, but this exposure through the podcast, through the communication, through the experiences you'll glean are going to come in handy somewhere down the road. You're right. And that's the way you got to look at these opportunities. You're right. And you can't, you can't stop telling them important stuff. I'm going to, I'm going to end you right now, my friend. Because they're looking at me like we've gone too long, too far. But, they, but it's been a great podcast. I told you it'd be a humdinger, and it was. So thanks to our co-hosts. Thanks to you, Rob. Thanks to our producers in the, in the booth. And that's it. Check us out on social media if you like. But, well, this is another edition of Adventures in Careerland. Land.